If like me, you think your problems are overwhelming, then look at what other people have to face. Every successful person has faced difficulties in their life and career. My guests will share with us the challenges they have overcome on the road to success. Every week we'll follow their story right here in Life with me, Patty Boulay. Hello and welcome to Life with me, Patty Boulay. My guest today is Matt Henry MB, who wowed London in Lola in kinky boots. He was Lola. Did you see it? Whoa, hey, hey. you never forget him if you see it. If you'd seen that show, like we won't either. Now, he won Olivier Award and was given an MBE for services to musical theater by His Royal Highness Prince Charles. Matt, what I love about you is that you said, I hope I can be a beacon for young people. I think that is absolutely wonderful because that's what we all hope to do. Of course. You know? So tell me, is this what you've always wanted to do? Yes, I always wanted to be an actor. From a very young child, I, I was kind of making up plays and stuff um, in my bedroom and then kind of present, calling my mum in to kind of show her them. Um, <laughs> but of course, you know, growing up in a Jamaican family, they were very strict and they wanted me to be a doctor, a, lawyer, a solicitor, a lawyer, a doctor, teacher, something, a real, get and, it, get yeah, a real, real job. job. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Get a real job. My father disowned me, so you, you're yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get a real job. Um, and so I kind of decided, right, the only way I can kind of make this work was to, I'll, I'll, t I'll take drama, GCC, but also take history and mm -hmm. you know the sciences yes. and so then I got good wow you did the sciences yes oh, yeah, good yeah. on you yeah, well a little bit of a brain up there my goodness <laughs> well it's better than mine <laughs> <laughs> I ducked the sciences yeah <laughs> okay and then I went on to university and um, for my mother's sake studied sociology and then um, but kind of minored in drama until I got to my third year and then I just majored in drama, didn't tell her, and then got a 2-1. I was like, I've got a degree. And she was like, good, good, now you can use it. I've never used it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, getting a degree, that's what I said to my children. Uh, let me boast a bit about my daughter. She... I've met your daughter. Yes, have you? Yes, really? she's a singer. Yes. 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 Yeah. Well, yeah, she, she's a songwriter yeah, and okay. a singer. But she had, she went to Westminster University and got the best result in Great Britain on legal reasoning on her second year. Wow. She's extremely brainy. That's because mommy banned television when she was little. <laughs> 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 Believe me, she didn't even know I was on television. Seriously. Really? When she was a lot older, she didn't know that, that <laughs> you know, because that's, yeah, I was a typical African mother. But, you know, like, you, <laughs> that's a terrible thing to say. Okay. <laughs> but you had your degree to please your mother. You see, that's a good thing. Okay, because I always say to people, do something to please someone else, not just to please yourself, because it makes you stronger. And you've got your degree, it shows that you can actually concentrate and do what you want, even if it's not what you want to do. Well, that's true. That is very true. And it kind of, it made her happy. Mm-hmm. And, and that happy gave you mother. peace. Yes. A happy son. <laughs> hey, give me five. Can you talk to my children? <laughs> it was it's yeah. very true, though. Yes. And when she saw you in Kinky Boots, was she very proud? She was. She was very. Do you know what? Um, she was like, God, you look really good as a woman. <laughs> Did she really? Now, those boots. Uh, this, she was loving those the boots. boots huh? She loved the weave, the hair. She loved everything. I like your mother. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. But the heels were very hard, very, very hard. Yeah, I was going to ask you how you walked in those, because I keep looking going, no, mm. no. You know, I'll be doing a Naomi Campbell, you know, <laughs> Alexa, Alexa Kimbo. Bambi, we call it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that would be me in those boots. But you did look good in them, but your voice. Thank you. I think nobody looked at the boots when you started singing. You know, everything just fits in. Thank you start you. singing, you know. How did you how did you get the role? Um wow. It was a very long process and but a very kind of a wonderful looking back now, the whole process, I kind of go, I was very lucky. I was very I was very, very lucky. Show business. Um and but took opportunities 
when mm -hmm. there were opportunities. That's to, right. Um, and that's what I'm a big believer in is when opportunity presents itself, you can either you run have to for take it, it or yeah, you, or you, you take, take it. it. You take it. And yes. um, my journey kind of started where I was always the understudy, um, working in the West End. I understudied on Miss Saigon, Lion King, Saturday Night Fever. I was very good. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. And I decided um, in 2013 to audition for The Voice, um, which I did. And lo and behold, I didn't realize at the time, but when I kind of did my blind audition and I opened my eyes, four people had turned around. Oh. Um, and I was like, wow, I can really sing, I think. And, you know, lo and behold, I got to the final. And from that, that kind of gave me so much confidence mm -hmm. to get into songwriting and to make my own music. But it also gave me the confidence to go back into musical theatre and audition now for lead roles. And because of the whole TV experience, I think producers saw me in a very different way. And um, I landed the role of Lola. Well, you took a chance. You took a chance. You went, because going on The Voice is not easy. No because you don't know what the outcome is going to be. Okay, I have a friend who was very famous and had hits, and of course she had quiet years, and she went on The Voice. No one turned around. And so you, you kind of know that it is, you have to take a, I mean, I did New Faces before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> I did New Faces was, you know, you had two Simon Cowells on the, really? on the panel, yes. And I, I only went on the show because my brother died in a plane crash, and I, I had to wait two weeks um, to fly back to Nigeria, and that's why I went on. And I, I can tell you, I don't really remember anything that happened on that day. Yeah, it's completely don't. numb. Yeah. Okay. And so I know it's a very brave thing that you did, but look where it got you. And people think you got out of bed and just became Matt Henry, no. don't they? Just <laughs> you know, and. Now, tell me what happened when you went, did you have to audition? Do you have to do lots of auditions to get the the, the Yes, the so you role? kind of go, first of all, kind of they send you sides to learn, so little, little bits of script um, from the show and mm -hmm. all the songs. And, um, and then you kind of workshop the whole process. They get you to come in in a pair of heels to see if you can walk in a pair mm -hmm. of heels. So no. I have never w worn heels in my <laughs> life. The best advice I can give to anybody is if you want to wear heels, practice at home. You have to. Yeah. Wear them in the bathroom, up, the, up and down the stairs whilst you're cooking. And that I spent two weeks doing that before my audition. Good on you. In these pair of heels that I bought off eBay. <laughs> <laughs> You bought them off eBay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were you holding on to yeah. things as you walked? St unstably walking around, <laughs> trying not to trip over the dog, you know. Um, and oh. yeah, no, I just kind of prepared my, it's all about preparing yourself for when you go into the room, nothing can phase you, you know. Yeah. You have your faith, you have your confidence, and you go in there and yeah, I presented my Lola. To the to the team. Brilliant. I guess they liked that. In that list, I love faith. Yeah, you have to. Because I used to be sick <laughs> before I went on stage. I used to be so nervous, so scared of it. And then I discovered prayer. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then I discovered prayer, and then I realized that I can just go, okay. I just pray, and if it goes wrong, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's that was why I did it, yes. It's out of my hands. If it goes wrong, it's your fault. I prayed, therefore, <laughs> it'll be okay. Isn't that funny? But that, it was naive, but that's yeah. how. So faith is a strong thing. You just, but you're prepared yeah. for it. You have to be prepared for everything. And for me, I just don't like, I don't want any excuses. No, oh, yeah. It's because I didn't do this. I didn't warm up properly, and that's why my voice didn't sound you know good or I didn't learn the lines and then I was forgetting them in the room I like to be prepared for battle it is uh, it's like you had to be battle ready yeah. you have to always be battle yeah. ready I tell you the other thing is if someone says to you can you do this oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes of course I can and then you think what did you just say <laughs> Can well, you ride a horse? Of course I can. Yes, I've never done it. Like never. Yes, you'll never know. You Young never... people just don't know that. They go, um, well, no, no. You say yes, and then you go and learn it. Yeah. Just like you did. You know, yeah. you went, put on your 
I can, I can, you know, you must have looked like Whoopi Goldberg in Ghosts. <laughs> did you ever see? Yes, I did. I'm sorry, Whoopi. <laughs> but, you know, she had those heels and I went, what? <laughs> that woman has never worn heels before. Did you see her? She, like a cowboy just came like out John of John Wayne. <laughs> like John Wayne, Wayne in Boots. That was so funny. Oh, so, sorry. I got carried away. What was your childhood like growing up? Um, I, it was a very special childhood, I guess, because I grew up in a one parent family. Mm -hmm. So my dad wasn't okay. really around. Mm -hmm. So my mum was father and mother, and there was four of us. And um, so I actually, because I'm the oldest, became okay, okay. the father, older brother, kind of looking after my siblings and also trying to be a child at the same time. And I guess I grew up very quickly, you know. Um, but it was it was it, at that time, at those times, it, it it was the best, you know, childhood you can ever have because I would take them out. We'd go to the there was none of this like internet and there was no, so you just created worlds for the kids, you know. And I'd do little performances for them, and I think that's what, how my love and passion came for acting and singing because I'd be, always be singing to my brothers and sisters and taking them to the park and doing little tea parties. And Did you organize them to do things? Yes. I get, <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it. So you were directing? And, I was yeah. directing. I was doing, I did everything. And it was just, yeah, it was a wonderful time growing up. My mother was very trusting of me and, um, yeah, and she was so loving as well and so encouraging. And I think that's why she was very kind of strict about you know, you, I want you to get an education. I want you to be somebody. Mm -hmm. And she kind of gave me those tools to kind of go, th go through life and be confident when you go into a room and, you know, when you're speaking to someone, address them correctly. And which, so she, she instilled so much discipline within us. Um, but yeah, I, I just, yeah, I had so much fun. And also my grandmother as well, she played a huge part. And she was the one that actually got me into singing because, um, you know, I remember we used to go to Sunday school and um, I'd always want, <laughs> I was like, oh, this year I'm going to be Joseph in the nativity. Okay, Matt, you're going to be the star. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're going to be the star. The star doesn't have any words. But then you kind of go, now, look back, I became the star. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's funny you should say that because as soon as you said that, I'm thinking, yeah, you were the star. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> it's funny how life has how this, life, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, and my grandmother, she kind of, she had this way of, you know, someone needs to sing. I'd never sung in my life, but I used to just listen to all the church songs. Uh, uh, Matt, you come up and sing. And I'd get up in front of the church and I'd go, Okay, and the pianist would play. And you, you know, in Pentecostal churches, they don't read music. It's no. like you, you grow up, <laughs> you're just yeah. learning all of a sudden, yeah. you know, so-and-so can play the bass or he can play the piano and, you know, you've got your cousin on the drums and they've never played. They've but, no they just, <laughs> but they watch, they learn and they absorb. Learn. Exactly. And, and the mistakes don't matter yeah. because you're playing to the Lord. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's where my passion for singing came. Because you know, I, I I guess I was I was good at that age, and then they would call me back up, and every Sunday I'd get up, and then I'd join the praise and worship team, and it just became it was a wonderful community and family I had at church, you know, and um, and I left church when I was eighteen actually when I moved to um, when I moved to London from Birmingham, and it, but what I carried from that was my faith, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and I know that my grandmother. She's not here now, but she actually was. That's what you think. <laughs> well, she, yeah, <laughs> she watched over mm -hmm. me, and she, you know, and she would always ring me up and say, you know, when I was going for castings and stuff, and she'd pray on the phone with me, and she was wonderful. Isn't it, that wonderful? She was wonderful, wonderful to have that support and that love. Yeah. Good heavens! You know the role of grandparents are underplayed in this country. It's such a pity because you have your children and you try to provide for them. But once you have your grandchildren, you've already learned how to look after your children. But you've also learned from experience what to do with your, where to let your grandchildren fly. And I think that is so sad because I'm a grandmother now mm. and I can't believe the rules that come into being a grandparent in this country. Something that's the most natural thing in the world is so restricted and held down. But you know... Let me say, the minute you walk through the door, as, the, the, as, as Matt Henry, 
not Lola from Kinky Boots. Everything you've described, everything you've described is embedded in your spirit. Because I come from a very large family and you can tell someone who's from a large family. You can usually tell the eldest as well. <laughs> and you can always tell the youngest because the youngest is always spoiled, okay? But the eldest is always, you see, that's what you do with your audience. You don't know it, mm. but that's what you do with your audience because you have that love of moving human spirits around. I, I did it because I have 36 nieces and nephews and wow. 25 great nieces and nephews. And I was the seventh of nine. So I know where you, you know, with, uh, with, with me, it was just, I was in the middle somewhere, number seven. <laughs> God's favorite number. <laughs> so I like yeah. to tell myself. <laughs> everything I had to share, so everything came to me in the seventh. <laughs> I don't know if you did that in your family. No, everything Mother came comes back out. from sh shopping, the eldest gets one, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then you think, I want that one, and then it goes. I want, and then it goes. Yeah. So you learn to let go and yeah. not be selfish. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's the same with the elders. You learn to let go and not be selfish. And not being selfish, to me, somebody, a, 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 an actor who you, you wouldn't know because he was gone before you were born, Michael Dennison, I worked with him in a show called Black Mikado. It was my first lead show and I was so nervous. I was petrified. I felt that I was the youngest in the company and everybody just thought I was hopeless. I just come from Africa, for goodness sake. I didn't even know what the theater was. And here I was playing the lead. So, of course, they could sense this green in me. And I went to him and I said, I'm so scared. Why is everybody so confident? Why do I die before I go on stage? And he said to me, he said, look at the stars. He said, you've got something in you that the audience want to protect. You give so much of yourself. And that's what you do. And I think a lot of the stars that I have met, Michael Jackson, Wow. Michael Jackson was such an innocent and everybody wanted to protect him. He gave up this thing, but he cared so much. Had a heart the size of the globe, you know. Mm. It was just wonderful, you know. And I think when you walked in, I just got this feeling about you too. And when I hugged you, I just <laughs> kind of melted into you. Thank and now you. I can understand what you brought to Lola. Because some people are very talented, but you, you cannot get the heart in it. And yours, you, you were kind of like the whole rounded package. And I think your mother <laughs> and your grandmother are just to blame for that. <laughs> they have you. to take the credit for what they have instilled in you. Now, I, you know, um, I want to talk to you about instant success because you did The Voice and a lot of young people now think that they just, oh, you just, of course, you just go on Bridget's Got Talent and you're a star and you've got everything and everybody start, I've got news for you, honey. And everybody <laughs> starts, everybody start pandering for you, you know. They don't know the problems, the headaches that go behind. It's hard being. work. It's hard work. Um, I mean, I finished university and I went to study at performing arts school. Mm -hmm. I'd never done ballet in my life and um, I'd never really danced in my life. But I went, to, I knew that if I was to be a success in musical theater, you, you, the singing Gotta have, yeah. can't carry you. It's, it's being a triple threat. It's being able to act, sing, and dance. dance. And so at the age of 21, for the first time in my life, I was doing ballet. And the class would start at eight o'clock in the morning. And we'd do ballet, jazz, contemporary. And school would finish at six. I would leave school at 10 because for me, I felt like I was, I was playing catch up and I wanted to be the best. So I'd still be at the bar stretching, I'd still trying to master how to do a pirouette. How to, and I spent, the two, I spent two years working consistently on myself. Um, you know, I just thought to myself, if you can, you, you, you've got this opportunity, you've got this opportunity, and if you want to get into the West End, take it. Don't finish, you know, everyone's finishing college at four. Oh, you can finish early today. Okay, yeah, bye, guys. I stayed, I would stay. I'd be around the piano working on my voice. La, 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 like everything. Because I knew I had, the destination was the West End. And um, just before um, getting into my third year, 
um, at Erdang, I, we weren't allowed to audition um, until you got to your third year. And one of the guys came to me and he was like, I'm going to this audition for Lion King. And I was like, oh, I want to see, oh, I, I just want to see if, you know, what it's like to audition. And so I kind of went along to this audition and I got the job. <laughs> but I didn't know I got the job until I got back to college. And the headmistress called me in and she said, Matt, where have you been today? I was like, oh, well, I, I, I was sick. I said, sorry, that's why I was late. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, were you sick enough to get the job in the line? <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got the job. Oh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and she, they loved, you know, they told me off, but they were so happy. Oh, and they let wonderful. me go early. And that was my first job um, in the West End. And it was, it was the starting of, yeah, where I am today. And for me, I just feel like if there's something that you want to do in life, you know, no one needs to know that you're working. You can work on it at home, but just you've got to work you've on got yourself. To put you've got to put the, the time in, yeah. the effort, the energy, because, you know, even when I got kinky boots, I, I didn't go out. I didn't go out partying, I didn't drink. I, I was watching my, I had to watch what I ate. I was so disciplined. I went to bed early, I didn't speak until four o'clock in the day. I was so militant because I thought, I've been given this opportunity and mm -hmm. I could win an Olivier here. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, and, and so that I, dis I was determined to win this Olivier and I worked on myself so much. I mean, yeah. And with the day when they announced, when we were at the award and they said my name, I just cried. Oh, wow. I cried because, you know, 1996, I went to the same college as Adrian Lester and I sat in this college in Joseph Chamberlain in Birmingham when my teacher read out that Adrian Lester had won this Olivier. And I sat there and I was like, I want to be like that. That's I want to be like that. Fantastic. And it happened. Matt, <laughs> it's such a pleasure. You are, my goodness. Thank you. I am now a groupie. <laughs> <laughs> I am now going to stalk you because your messages are great. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Thank for you having so me. much for sharing those words of wisdom. Like Matt said, if you want to get something, just set that goal for yourself and go for it. He wanted the Western, worked hard, put the work in it and got there. And you could do it too. Like Matt Henry said, if just think, if Matt Henry can do it, you can do it. But I tell you, I don't even think of that because he's a hard worker. <laughs> but you need to work really hard. And whatever you want, you will get it. Just go for it. See you next week. Hey!